Welcome to What Do You Say Anime? My name is Peter. On today's episode, we will be talking tropes. Joining me today is our lovely co-host, Miles and Pat, along with our special guest making her second appearance on the podcast from the Shoujo Sunday podcast. We have Miss Chica Supreme. Chica, how are you doing today? I'm good. How are you guys doing? Glad to be here. Yes, glad to have you. I'm doing fantastic. So how this is going to work is we each brought some examples of tropes that we love and some that we hate. It could be anything anime related to shows, genres, demographics, and anything else that related to the tropes that we love or tropes that we can't stand. We are each going to just start with a positive and then go vice versa from there and discuss. So without further ado, uh, I'm going to take it away. I'm going to do it first. So my first trope that I love in anime is action stories that present real threats to the main character or the main cast. Um, I think a lot of times that we see mm. in... Um, I'll say mostly like battle shonens or something like that, where the threat of, of like a real eminent threat of a series doesn't show up until later or at any point, I never feel like that there is a threat. So when the shows present something to me where I think at any time can change the story, especially with the main character themselves or the main character's cast, I think it does a really good job at creating the unknown. And to me, that's what I really like with uh, my action series. So from examples that I really enjoy with this. Uh, Gurren Lagan, I think, has a great example with, like, episode 7. I'm not going to do too many spoilers. I should say, this is also to be a spoiler warning um, for any show that we talk about, so sorry in advance. For any anime ever. Uh, for, if you haven't seen <laughs> yeah. any anime ever, every single one of them, spoiler alert. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, you're good. So, another threat that I wanted to, like, point out that I really enjoyed, and I don't know if people see it as a threat, is in Full Metal Alchemist with the idea of alchemy and i think it's in two ways so one is with the threat of alchemy itself of what the negative effects it can do because we see a lot of positive effects with alchemy especially with their power system but the idea of like bringing their mom back has these negative repercussions with losing their physical body losing their spiritual bodies i think that's a really cool threat to see like what else alchemy can do in that world and it adds to that with the philosopher stone later on in the series uh, and there's some real quick, some other examples of shows that I really like to do these threats. Psychopaths, uh, Grimgar, Fate Zero, and Ava um, were some other examples. So what are you guys' thoughts on this trope? So, I, I mean, I think everyone loves high stakes. I mean, I guess maybe some people could be stressful, so maybe not. But my my question for you, Pete, and, you know, we were we were chatting about what we were going to do. And so um, I'm going to put you on the spot here. Do it up. Uh, but how do you, and I think, you know, there's no like right or wrong answer to this, but like, how, how do you like draw that line? You know, because, you know, I, I think a show like Hunter Hunter, there are threats, yes, right? Uh, there's yes. definitely threats that matter. However, I, gone ain't going to die. You know what I mean? True. So like, it, like, so where is that line to you? Because obviously you can't just like murk your main character mm-hmm. every time. So like, how do you decide if, if they if someone beats a threat and there are minimal consequences, that doesn't necessarily mean it wasn't a, a real threat. Mm-hmm. You know, like how do you differentiate between that? Yeah, I do wish that there was like a defined answer, but I think this is more of just like a show by show basis. Something like Hunter yeah. Hunter with like the first arc example is the Hunter exam, where nothing happens to Kilo and nothing happens to Gon, but during this arc, you see like people are getting killed around them. Like, there's actual Mm -hmm. threats. Like, the world itself is a threat. So, to me, that's something where I picked up. I'm like, okay, nothing's probably going to happen to Gon, but, like, maybe something happens to, like, the surrounding cast members that we meet during this arc. And it's stuff like that that I am drawn towards. And then there's something like My Hero, where we have someone, like, Gentle Criminal, where I'm like, this dude is, like, he's going to ruin my rep on Twitter. Like, that's that's the villain that he's going to be for this arc. Like, that, it poses no threat other than maybe my clout. So, like, to me, like, those are, like, the, some examples I was thinking of, like, shows that I think do it well and shows that maybe pull it away from it a little bit. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. I think I like that trope as well. I think, like, because sometimes you'll see... um just different anime and like they're supposed to be stakes but they never die they just come back and they're great and no like somebody should die like Mm -hmm. i want to see that like i want to experience the pain 
Like, is this going to work out? So, yeah, I really do like to see that in anime as well. Chica, can I ask you a question about Pete's trope? Um, (laughs) Please don't. (laughs) So uh, we both are repping our Sailor Moon merch um, in various ways. However, at the end of season one of Sailor Moon, uh, the Sailor Scouts all die, but then are immediately brought back to life. Um, Yeah. So obviously we both like Sailor Moon, but did that bother you like while watching it? Or do you think that even though like the consequences of their sacrifice were like reverted a bit, that it still like held weight? Like what is your thoughts on that? I feel like this would count as like my exception. Okay. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. This is this <laughs> is my <laughs> exception to the like okay, like um I would I I don't know. I I love Sailor Moon obviously. I have a Sailor Moon tattoo, like I have the merch, all that. But like even her dying and the scouts dying in season one, that's not even the first time they all die. True. Um which we already <laughs> said spoiler alert. Yeah. They yeah. they <laughs> they die and come back multiple times. <laughs> so um it doesn't really like I think because of when I was introduced to it, I didn't mind it. Because it's like, oh, I'm nostalgic. Like, as a little kid, like, yes, these characters die. But I'm a child. Would I really understand death? Oh, they came back. Great. And, like, we're back to, like, dressing up and, you know, magical girl things again (laughs) and stuff. Um, But I think that's something that really frustrated me. Like, once I got a bit older... Um, about Sailor Moon was just okay like y'all keep having people die and come back like where's the gravitas which I feel like the final season which I know with the new um the new reiter um crystal pretty sailor like the the new iteration of it um why can I not remember it? I'm so trash. <laughs> it's I'm Crystal, right? Crystal, yeah, yeah, Crystal. So with Crystal, they have the two movies and stuff, and the two movies are supposed to be the final season or be for that. You get that, the gravitas in it, where you're really questioning how can they, are they going to come back? Like, um, So that made me feel more satisfied. But yeah. I like that. Um, I, I, before I just want to wrap up real quick with this as, as we move on the other person, I think like one of the uh, like exceptions to this, I think for me was something along the lines of like ranking of Kings where I think the message of the show isn't about the action, even though that there is a lot of action to me, someone like Boji, if it was up to him, wouldn't fight at all. If he could, like, I don't think he wants to ever. Uh, and so that's something to me where it's like, I don't think anything is ever going to happen to Boji and the cast and the crew. I also think like that's not the point of the show where something like I don't know Black Clover is about being the Wizard King and fighting all these other people like to me that's like um another example of like ones that I don't find like the threat oh well so that's enough about me Miles let's pass over to your first trope sure um so the first one that I'm going to talk about uh, is like uh Groundhog Day-esque time loops um which I adore I was looking at my top like 50 anime of all time and five of my top 20 contain time loops of some sort. Um, so I, I know what I like and it's time loops. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so there's a few reasons uh, that I, I like this. I think it's interesting to see characters grow from like the same set of things. It's sort of, you know, like normally you only have like one chance to grow from something. Um, but much like Tom Hanks in the movie Groundhog Day, um, getting to see a character go through the same thing, like repetitively. Who was that? That was Bill Murray. Bill Murray. Yep. That's it. The, um, other, the other like stereotypical. Same flavor. Right. <laughs> Thank you for doing that too, because I feel I used to think I was such an idiot for doing that one time, but now I know it's not. No, you're just you're a white guy who doesn't watch movies. It's okay. Yeah. No, know? for sure. <laughs> um, uh, getting to see them you know, like, learn from that same thing and, like, maybe take different lessons from it at, like, different times is neat. Um, It's just not something we ever get to see in real life. Um, You can also do, like, neat, like, what-if scenarios uh, where something like, say, 
that loops like re-zero. Like you can try different paths and everything, which is neat. Like that's sort of a neat thing. And then uh, sort of playing to like Pete's thing. I think it's a way to have like almost impossible to defeat odds and not have it seem plot armory in a way like like that. Yeah, so, like, how do you beat this impossible thing? Well, you get infinite tries to do it, and, like, maybe you'll be emotionally scarred, or you'll give up partway through or something, but, like, you do get to win, and it makes sense because time isn't real for you. Um, <laughs> you know, so, but, like, seeing how they set that up can can be really interesting. Um, you know, so Higurashi is, like, one of my favorite things, which is an example from one of these. Summertime Rendering is another show that I love that... Um, does this um depending on how long you consider a time loop being sailor moon as well <laughs> um, so yeah um that's why i like time loops does anyone else have thoughts on those like them dislike them question for you what yeah what so you brought up examples of the ones that you like what are what animes that do time loops bad Hmm, okay, well... Here we go. Did I put you on the spot? <laughs> well, no, no I... No, no. Very, oh, is this the re-zero trigger? There's, no, no, there's, there's a no. very, very obvious one that you yeah. can probably think of. Although the time loop in this isn't done poorly. Oh. It's the one specific... Oh, I actually... The very said... one... Yeah, you, you, did, so, you, know, you did this by accident. I, I, Le, okay. I LeBron <laughs> alley and you're about to... D, no, D-Wade alley and you're about to LeBron dunk it. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna... I'm about to dunk yeah. over... over one of Pat's favorite anime. So there are two examples of time loops in Rascal Doesn't Dream of Bunny Girl Senpai. Um, and one of them is just fine. It's in good, it's good right. in fact, which is the one where the uh, younger Koga. classman, yeah, Koga wants to like get Sakuda or whatever his name is to like her. And so admittedly, I think she gives up kind of quick. I would have loved her to go on for like a couple centuries or something. <laughs> um, but that's the Higurashi fan in me. Um, but I think that's great. The longer time loop, which is the fact that the series happens multiple times in um, that, uh, what's her name's dream uh, is I think executed poorly because I don't think one that it's really set up at all. Like what's neat about time loops is that you can think about Haruhi, right? Like where it's like something like, oh, like this thing is familiar. And like, that is obviously a controversial time loop because they don't really alter a lot sure. for like six of the eight times that they have the exact same episode. But there are hints that it's a time loop in there. Um, so that would be another example, even though I like the Endless Eight, because I think it's great that someone bothered to do that. Um, from like a purely not being really into time loop standpoint, uh, it's probably poorly executed as well, just because you know, with time loops, you want, like, the cool thing is the iteration, right? Seeing where things are the same, seeing where things are different. And then if you have same, 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 you know, for episode three, four, five, six, and seven of this eight, <laughs> you know, uh, episode thing, then mm -hmm. that's probably not the best use of your episode space. Um, yeah. So those would be two examples of times I, I think that they were, they could have been better executed. Anybody Great. got anything else for Miles? Uh, I don't know. I, I enjoy time loops to a very, very small amount. And it's funny because, like, the ones that are done really well, I really liked. Like, Haruhi is one of the examples you used. I really liked that uh, when it was in uh, the uh, Blind Girl Senpai, that specific arc. And I, I, yeah, I even enjoyed it when it was done poorly, according to, I don't know, some map on Reddit that I still don't understand <laughs> how to read. Um, you know, I still don't believe you. It's uh, <laughs> it's fair. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. You know, um, but I, I generally speaking, don't like time. I, I know you're speaking of time loops, but time travel in general, I'm not a fan of in stories. Even though so many of my favorite stories <laughs> have have it done well in it, I because I, I think it's so easy to do it poorly that uh, that even just the slightest error. Or or inconsistency can just ruin a story completely, which is what happened with uh, Bunny Girl for you, to, to yeah. put it very That clearly. is part of the reason I guess I do like time loops, too, because as long as you have like a closed loop where you start somewhere, go up, and then go back, and it re-rolls for everyone except for a set number of people, you don't run into as many of those paradoxes as you do, because you're actually rewinding time as opposed to traveling through it, which right. is what leads to weird 
grandfather paradox yep. sort of things. Okay, let's pass it to Chica. What's uh, your first positive trope that you want to talk about? Um, the first positive trope that I have, I, I know it's just generic, but I do love the power of friendship. I, I do. I love it. I think that, you know, if you just have all your people come together and like you're all fighting towards something and then you're victorious, like I personally love that. So and that is you see that throughout demographics and stuff. So you definitely see that in like Sailor Moon. You see that in like My Hero. Um just you see it in so many different anime like you could just probably name drop any of them yeah. <laughs> like there's like a little hint of it and i just i don't think i'll ever get over it you know I, it's just nice seeing like community i guess and everyone's sort of going on that hero's journey of like i'm finding myself and this is how, what i bring to the table and these are the attacks that i could like do and it all culminates to everyone winning and the earth being saved with the, with that trope, do you like when it's? Do you more like it along the lines of like friendship, or do you like like the found family idea of something like maybe like One Piece, where now we're at the point where like the Straw Hats are essentially like a family? Do you like that, or do you like where it's like Deus Ex Machina? Um, my best friend over here comes out of nowhere and punches the bad guy in the face type of thing. No, like, I feel like if that would even by itself be another trope that I like, although I didn't have my on my list. I also love found family. I'm very big on that as well. I think, I don't know. I just like the idea of togetherness mm -hmm. and, you know, whether it is like a group of friends coming together to like do something or it's these different people and like they become that family and someone's technically like... I guess the nurturer, the protector, you know, the joker type. I think that's great. So, yeah, yeah. I, lo I I love that choice because I feel like that's that's like a trope that once people get like a little into anime, they like sort of malign a little bit, you know, because they're like, I'm cool now. I I don't like it when friendship wins i like dark stuff um <laughs> and like i mean i definitely went through like a phase of that but like a lot you know like i i don't know it's nice to like it's a good message and like it's relatable and like when you go through bad things in real life uh your friends help you through them right like that's how you yeah, get through things in real yeah yeah so yeah. knock on wood um you know so i i think that's like a great choice because it's just it's relatable it's comfortable and it's it's like real. It's like a real thing, you know. Like I I love time loops, but I, I can't relate to that. <laughs> so, <laughs> or can you? Uh, well, there's deja vu sometimes. True. Oh yeah, true. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, it's <laughs> my little mini time loop where I thought I saw my cat already. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think if there's like a power of friendship where like they do it too much, where it's like we get it. Like I wonder if there's. I'm trying to think of like an anime that does that. See, Pete's trying to be a negative Nancy. Hey, um, someone's got to play contrarian around here. That's my our found family. I'm the contrarian. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I love it. Even like my favorite thing in the world, which is Berserk, has like an entire arc devoted towards power of friendship and found family. So yeah. I, I can't I can't knock on it. I was just wondering because it's like who's who like is there anybody out there that's like I hate the power of friendship. It sucks. I'm just trying to think if there's like an anime that's like that. I can relate to that one person, but I can't really think of one. Uh, Devil Man Crybaby. Oh God. Um, <laughs> sort of subverts it that you may or may not need more than just your friends to save the world. True. Um, and try as you might, you're like six people, and if you're against everyone, it turns out you can't stop institutional racism, and you will die. Yep. Yeah, um, you'll making, all die. You're making great points. <laughs> die. <laughs> That might be my favorite anime ever. I don't know. <laughs> Wait, which version of it? The the Netflix one or like yeah, the older the, version? The yeah, the Netflix one. Um, yeah. Okay. Which well, I I liked it because I had never seen anything from anime at that point, uh, where people just lost. Like I just people always win in anime. And little younger Adam, I wasn't that young, but younger Adam Who's was Adam. 
uh, sorry, younger Miles. I forgot. I forgot that I have a fake name on this <laughs> podcast. My apologies. Um, <laughs> my name isn't Miles. Here's a here's a, yeah. a I, secret I, Lord no, Lord Trump. We lasted <laughs> two hundred <laughs> episodes. It's finally on the bag. <laughs> 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 yeah, well, guys, um, if it's if it's any consolation, my name actually is Chica Legit. So okay, <laughs> it's not. Yeah. Um, but yeah, seeing seeing like the good guys like band together, decide to work towards a goal, and then lose, uh, was uh really great. And by great, <laughs> I mean I crawled up into a ball and didn't want to be a human anymore. But uh, it made me feel things, so that was fun. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah, I felt things definitely. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right, let's pass over the Pat. Pat, what's your first positive trope? Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, I I don't know. I did a lot. Uh, did these more in like a, a neutral sense or my main ones. So uh, the, this is just another one that I thought of pretty recently. Uh, would be power systems that are based on your personality or your experiences yeah. or anything along that lot li- those lines. Um. I didn't really know how else to put it. I just said, I like it when things make sense, <laughs> Which, you know, uh, is a very. It, and if you if you know me, that's actually very true. I like it when things make sense. So I think it shows that do it really well. Uh, great examples would be Ruby, I think, does it really well, where we- your weapons and your semblances are all based on who you are, your uh, your personality and your semblance sometimes blend into two into one thing. Uh, I think another good show or example would be Pokemon and in the literal sense where the horse that is has a burning uh, or a, a flame for a uh, for mane. a mane. That's that's a fire type. I like that. You know? <laughs> I like that shit. You know, and then uh, <laughs> one more good example, I'd say, is like Konosuba. Uh, and I think this is more of a, a in-depth one, but all of uh, all of Kazuma's traits or his his stats that he are he's given are makes so much sense his luck stat his whatever and it's all explored and played with throughout the show uh so i think that that's uh a trope that i really like when it's done well the only show that i could think of off the top of my head that did it really poorly because it's hard to do this poorly because it's like you either do it or you don't um i guess high school dxd it's like how how did these characters get their powers is it because they have big boobs or what like i i don't know like what is the there's no at least from Again, granted, maybe I'm missing it and some source material reader is yelling at me, but I didn't see why Rios was the the head devil over Akino or something like that. I like, think you know. it was blood. Like, she was just related to... Well, yeah, related, how right. deep do we want to go into high school DXD lore? Because <laughs> well, 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 I can Let me pull out my I, line now. I, I, no, no, you, right. I can answer this question. I just <laughs> no. don't know if I want to. <laughs> you, you are right that it was that she was related, right? But I guess my point is, like, so why are they stronger than the other devils or why, you know, like it wasn't really explored very much, at least from, again, from the one and like one episode or one season and two episodes of the second season that I watched. Okay. I, I, I actually, okay. Next episode, the questionable eugenics me- message behind high school DXD. Yeah, let's dive Is that deep. what we're going to, we're going to dive deep into if if the power system if that ever happens DXD. that's our last episode I'm it's so the last it. episode because we have officially run out of content that is rock bottom <laughs> oh no we can't stop before pat week come on oh um, yeah okay we'll do pat week and then we can do that thank you i'm surprised you didn't <laughs> say um sao especially with kirito kind of like how he oh, well, gets his yeah stuff that's actually a good point that, that's a good call yeah that the fact that his reflexes or like the fact that he is the the fastest or whatever ma- matters like yeah that's another great example again there's so many shows that have done it where or done it to a little degree i guess you know where it matters for like the main characters or whatever but i think like ruby and pokemon are really good examples where every character or everything that they do it, it's it's pretty relevant mm-hmm. you know i have an example but it's like a, for like a bad instance of it oh, have right y'all out. seen have y'all seen bell oh yeah the movie yeah yeah, yeah. not I saw the North American premiere. Okay. Well, uh hate to spoil it for you, <laughs> but It's Beauty and the um, Beast, yeah. Yeah, basically, but the dragon and his him being stronger than everyone else. Yep. It, it's based off of how he's able to take abuse like from his dad. Physical abuse. That, that's yep. 
Yeah. Like they take Wait, like what? his micro, like his biotech, whatever from his body. And then he's the strongest person in the game. And it's like, when you realize what's going on, it's like, he's the strongest person because he's used to being abused by his dad. Yeah. Like, is, that, is that framed positively? Like, oh, it's so good that he's so strong. Uh, That's hard to say. Or, or <laughs> is, it, is it not like mentioned? Cause like one of my favorite things like is this, book web novel called worm and people get powers based off of like traumatic situations they come through and mm -hmm. like often that that can be abuse however it's it's painted as like bad you know what i mean like they did get the powers from this but like the powers don't make them recover from the trauma it, they're still like trauma and they like that's like working through trauma is like a major theme and stuff um, and so I was just wondering if it was like framed and like, uh, isn't it great that this guy's so strong? Oh, that just happens to be because he got abused by his father. Let's not delve into that or not. Like, I don't know. I was at, cause I, feel I, like they, I think they played it out just like that. Like, oh, it's yeah. like, oh, he's so strong and he's able to get away from like, like these sort of officer types that are in the, the U app. And then you find out, oh, he's strong and he has like this um, art on his back because those are like br inward bruises. And so it's like, oh, this is actually really sad. OK, <laughs> that that actually like shield hero where Raftalia gives a speech about why it's good that she was made a slave because she would have never been able to reach her inward potential without like the physical pain that being a slave like embarked on her yeah there's a hundred percent in that show by the way it is it is yeah <laughs> i uh, i have feelings about that but uh people who watch um i guess you would know why <laughs> there's there's a reason i gave the show with two <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, it was it's it's like but it was very much like I got to be this great for this very terrible reason. And it's yeah. just yes. like but it's viewed as good. Um Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, it's uh, weird. <laughs> what a show. <laughs> okay. I think it's time to move on to our negatives. Okay, so I'm going to start off with my first negative. I and I'm going to break this up into just like a general sense but also do like little sub tropes within the trope is just fan service in general whether it's yeah people like wait you like it no this, this is, is negative. negative we don't like negative tropes. okay okay yeah i yeah. i will do some <laughs> okay I'll, I'll hold it but like stuff like <laughs> the biggest example the one that came to me was a show called fire force where there is a character who is oh. unlucky and she is unlucky in the sense that when she gets like her unluck she loses her clothes um, yeah. It makes no sense to the plot because they are fighting uh, fire fire spirits, and for some reason she needs to lose her clothes like, when fighting fire and stuff like that. To me, just like really pulls me away from it. Um, stuff like groping, um, tripping over and like landing on somebody's chest is like, oh, funny you were there, or opening the door at the wrong time and there's a naked girl. Um, to me, that all seems super like early 2000s harem stuff where like they couldn't think of what to write so they needed to fill two minutes and then sort of added that to the the story to me fan service like 97 percent of the time adds nothing to the story adds nothing to the plot it doesn't really make sense why it's there the exception to me and this doesn't just go for like etchy or fan service, but just like stuff in general where the context is there to be something very specific. So, you know, something like we've watched this before, Rosario Vampire, where they have something along the lines of like 300 panty shots. Like the show is designed around to have panty shots. Do I think it's good? No, but like I understand why it's there. Or something unrelated to like Etchy, the show Goblin Slayer. He just kills goblins, and that's, like, the whole point of the show. So I think, like, when it has the context of having the fan service to be a fan service show, it's not as appalling. But when you have shows or just, like, battle shonens or any any genre or demographic, it doesn't really matter. And fan service are sort of just sprinkled in there. It doesn't add anything. If anything, it hinders the story. It hinders the plot to me. So 
that's my rant. Um, I guess for like things that shows that I kind of get a pass for this, um, high school DXD. I can't really explain why it gets a pass. It just does. And same thing with like Konosuba. I think when it's more in like a comedical sense, I think it could get a little bit more leeway. But when it's I don't, I don't know. Just there's there's shows that like recently came out. Say like my dress up darling, where I think it's a show that is fantastic. And if you ruin the ra- or if you got rid of the random fan service elements, it would be that much better. But I kind of, I know why it's there. I just wish it wasn't. So uh, that's my yeah. rant on fan service. <laughs> I think yeah. uh, I think your point about uh, whether a show is needs it or or uses it in a way where it is relevant is a really good point uh i, I mean you and i talked about this before we uh recorded but i think like in gurn lagan it's done really really well where yoko she's back here somewhere she's fan service uh at the very very start but the whole point is which of course you don't realize it at the time but the whole point is that you're supposed to be seeing the world through simone's eyes which is when he when he is younger he's and a when 12 he's year just, old boy or whatever he's a 12 year old guy he's looking at yoko and he's like whoa woman whoa beautiful like what like yep. so that's the, the purpose of that fan service in the show um versus i, I don't know i'll ruffle some feathers like dress up darling the why why do we need that fan service like you said the scene where they open up the door and you see her, you know, like, like, we don't need that. We don't it, or I don't think the show that show needs that. And it completely detracts from the show for me. Like, it, it's not the only reason why I struggled to watch that show. But it frustrated me a lot to mm. see those clips and to see in the second scene. I get it. Like, you know, you could argue you're seeing the show or you're seeing it from the perspective of uh, what's the main character's name? Gojo. Uh, Go Gojo. Oh well, this is what he was seeing too. So maybe you're like, I, did they need to <laughs> make it so sexual? Then did they really it, it, like, need yeah. to? Because like, like in the I, second I, episode, I agree with Gary's because like that that's like the idea of like you know he opens the door and there's a naked girl standing there, but like we don't see the girl. So like that's like a I'm gonna say this. It's like a little bit better, but not quite. To me, we it's, do see the girl. She trips and there's uh like. Do we? Okay, it's been a minute. Like, I, yeah, I, 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 I swear, it's like we—it's like the overview, and like we don't actually see her. But you know what? I—I I took too many blows to the head, and my CTE is kicking yeah. in, so I don't remember. Um. <laughs> oh, but to get to fan service, like, and this because I'm because I'm bi, so I like tits as much as the next person. Yep. Okay. But like when it comes to sometimes it's just so unnecessary, and then it's like in the shows. What makes me uncomfortable is just the ages of these people, right? For sure. So with my dress up darling, like how old is she? And people are selling like the big p- pillows of her, and I'm just okay. Like it's it's a lot. It's a lot, and it's like a little bit. It's like okay, like you know, I can like that's fine, or maybe I'll even be like, oh yeah, that I. I that's exactly what I needed, but <laughs> most of the time, no. The same, the same thing with uh, like Kobayashi. The second season, oh, I don't yeah. even know if I really could. I could barely fit, uh, like start it, let alone finish the second season of Kobayashi. Because, like, why, why, why does this dragon that looks like a child or, or is built like a child just also have triple J breasts? Like, why? Right. Yeah. What is the yeah. purpose of this? Like, you know. Like to sell the pillows. Believe, yeah. Well, true. But like, I can't believe like I was siding with like Chinese censorship laws. Like I was on the side of like censor <laughs> censor her. Don't yes. don't show her. And I that's crazy to me that I was on that. <laughs> like <laughs> like like there's a first time for everything. But honestly, like that's a show that that's a good example of it. I don't know. A lot of etchy shows are like that though for me yep. too. Where it's just like why can't they be? your point's great like why can't they be 20 why can't they be 24 why can't they be in college why why can't they and i get it japan well i don't know like we we give japan the excuse of oh well high school is a big deal for them because it's a coming of age whatever that that's the case here in the u.s too you know what else is a big deal coming of age college you know yeah you could very easily do it don't give them that excuse they're doing it because they're perverts right like they're doing it yeah. because it's what sells and it's it's part of like that culture right like and i don't know spitting I yeah i do it's, i do want to add one thing that uh, where one show that i think that does it well is something like food wars where 
I've had somewhere like I've ate food and I've literally described it as orgasmic. And then when they show their food that they're eating and they're like literally having orgasms to me, that's funny. Like I, I, I do think that's hilarious. Um, I don't think they play yeah. it in a way to like overly sexualize people. They do do it in the show. Don't get me wrong. But yeah. I think that's like an example of like, I like the visualization of them like literally exploding with flavor type of thing. Yeah. It's like equal opportunity nuts. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Guys and the girls. Yeah, quote yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, I'm really quick. tattooed on my chest. <laughs> equal opportunity nuts. <laughs> <laughs> to put to put timing because you said it sounded like early 2000s but in 1995 neon genesis evangelion aired and there is a scene where shinji trips on ray and accidentally gropes her and it's played super straight where it's just insanely awkward and she's like what is going on here and then like after like 10 seconds of silence is like can you please get off me and it's yeah. like so that trope existed long enough before 1995 that there is a scene in an anime making fun of and like playing that trope straight so like who knows i i've you know i haven't seen a lot of anime from like the 80s or 70s or anything but like probably like who knows? or something had it like, yeah, yeah like how Ron long Ron this Jeff, has yeah. been happening yeah, yeah that's <laughs> um anyways that's that's a good one okay cool miles let's pass over to you for your first negative sure um so i dislike the trope first girl always wins um which is when in like romance anime uh that the first i guess this the trope is called first girl always wins but it could be the first guy like in kami sama kiss you know who the main love interest is right away yeah. um you know so um the reason i dislike this is if you're gonna hit me with like multiple potential love interests i want there to be some tension i need that like, yeah. otherwise, I feel like my time is getting wasted. You know what I mean? Like, we're developing this character and his, like, potential relationship with someone else. And I know that's not going to go anywhere. I know that person is going to end up lonely because, heaven forbid, they find someone else who isn't our main character at the end of this. Um, you know? And I just, like, I don't like that. Like, I don't mind a story where you know that someone's going to end up together. But then don't waste my time with, like, four other potential characters that are fawning over like our main character. Like sometimes you can hit me with like, you know, some love polygon stuff and like, that's fine. But like, don't make it like the whole conceit of the show, I guess. Um, so like, I just don't like that. It like cuts out tension. There's also this thing where like, sometimes you think the first girl isn't going to win. And then there's a flashback and like, they actually were secretly the first person the whole the entire time. time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, it, it to me it's like weird it like has like this weird purity thing to it where it's like if you ever fall in love with someone and then fall out of love with someone then like you're it's like less valuable than like if they were the first person you loved like and i, I get that it's like a romantic concept to like find one person and fall in love with them and everything and like i don't mind those stories existing but i just feel like we don't get a lot of stories where it's like actually a difficult decision for someone to play it through. Um, so places where this is like done well, I think this is done well in like Toradora. Um, I think that um, even though first girl wins in that, like you, you see feelings develop over time and, and the secondary characters have impact on like our main characters that like matters in a way, mm -hmm. um, which I like because normally you see the main character having impact on the potential love interests, but they don't really affect them so much. Um, other reasons I could see people liking this is that it's just, it's comfy to know what's going to happen, right? Like you don't need to like, you just want to see a love story and you don't want tension. And you just want to see two people you like get along. And then also it's nice if a bunch of other people like you too. Like I get that. It's, you know, it's nice and comfy. Um, I like a lot of shows that have this, you know, like I had previously mentioned, like Kami-sama Kiss is one. Um, something like Food Wars even that we talked about earlier, like has this, like, you know that Arena is like the main girl, but like, you know, we're going to like throw in some other potential love interests and stuff too, to spend some time with. Um, and then just a slight note of why I don't like this. It often results in your main character being kind of dumb, you know, <laughs> where they're just completely oblivious to the fact that like, 
six other people are throwing themselves at them. And then they're just like, I don't notice this. And I'm never going to acknowledge the fact that you care about me. And you're not going to ever acknowledge that you care about me. But I'm going to go hang out with this person who is who the writers decided that I should fall in love with. So bye. Um, you know, so that's that's my first one that I, I do not like. I was thinking about something like this with you um, based off what you said was like, you know, like when they make promises when they're like five, it's just like, how was I supposed to remember that promise we made 12 years ago? And then like, that's the foreshadowing to first or not foreshadowing, but like the backstory to first girl. It's like, Oh, you were first girl the whole time. I love you. I, I, Oh man. (laughs) Yeah. You know, they kind of, they kind of do that in fruits basket. They kind of do that where it's like, um, but it's with oh. guys, but it's like at first Toru meets, um, oh wait, should I not tell you? Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. Talk, talk, talk. And then someone give me a thumbs up. Okay. okay. But I, I do want to oh, watch. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'll say it. You can take your, yeah. I'll okay. You so, up, Miles. um, okay. So, uh, Kyo, it's Toru is, is little and then she meets Yuki yeah. Right. But then she like and he helps her get home and meets her mom. Mm-hmm. But then she technically met Kyo first because Kyo knew Taru's mom. Yep. And so it's like he actually was endgame like the whole time, the whole time and stuff. Um, And so they play off of that. Um, So, like, I get what you're, I get what he's saying with that. Um, And then I think they also did it with uh, Fushigi Yugi. But that one's a little bit more problematic. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's Tamahome and like all the other, uh, her warrior, like that's convoluted, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. You can come back. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. No, 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 it's okay. <laughs> I thought it was very funny. Yeah. Miles goes, give me a thumbs up when you're done. And then deafens. And then Pete, Pete five seconds up. later gives you a thumbs up <laughs> and after say, and Grant, to be fair to Pete, he said, I will give you a thumbs up when we're done oh, Miles, but like okay. five seconds after Whoops. Yes. I, I just yes. thought like Chica had made like like I don't know how fruits baskets work, so right. I thought it could have just been like a very succinct point, and then I was like, "Cool, I'll come back," and then it was not over. But that's no, okay. No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if you have like an exception to this. I my except because I I do enjoy First Girl, but I really like the exception to when they have the chemistry where it's like there's a reason a lot like the reason like they they should be with First Girl, like. I mean, like, it feels mm. like forever. I, I think Fruits Basket, is, I'm not going to say the names, but Fruits Basket, I feel like they're a perfect couple. Um, mm-hmm. Recently yeah. aired, like, Insomniacs After School. Like, to me, like, that couple is, like, they're soulmates. And, like, yeah. I like I get it. I like it when stories do that instead of just picking the couple and then run with it. There's a few where, yeah. like, I don't think that they mesh. I think Chica, have you seen Say I Love You? Yeah, okay. I read it too. Okay, so like I do like the couple, but to me, like they don't seem like forever. But like they they set it up where it's like they're only going to be together throughout the entire story, and so there's a there's a few stories I think do it well, and a few stories that don't do it well at all. I feel the yeah. same way about um, Hori Mia, to be honest. Ooh, they're that. together, but I don't think that they would stay together. But I like that. that's I me. like that. I like that take. I yeah, so I've been kind of I've been watching Horamia and like I I really liked it, but I mm. I very much more like the like president vice president couple as far as being like yeah. a, a couple that like I don't know if Hori and uh Guy have Miyamura, Miyamura, Miyamura. like they're not like super chemistry y. Like I I think they're a fun couple and like they definitely seem to me like people who would like date in high school and everything. But then there's always this weird part for me that like part of it was supposed to be that he was like this like alternative guy who didn't like dress correctly and like had piercings and all of this stuff and like people I guess are very judgy about that in Japan or whatever. And like she liked him and saw something anyway, and then he just gets hot, like in episode three and it was like also he cleaned up and he's just normal looking now <laughs> he's right, really like, good looking <laughs> yeah we meet him and then he's like alternative he's cool and then he just proceeds to change himself to be in a relationship and i think that that's dumb <laughs> but, yeah. um... it's like it's like greece but we haven't seen the part where they realize that they were changing themselves yet so i don't know yeah. if they're gonna sing uh you're the one that i want or not, no, not but yet. yeah that would be 
I would like it. Yeah. To say if I have an exception for this, Pete, I do. And it's every anime romance I like because this <laughs> never doesn't happen. I gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's in like, but something like Insomniacs is to me, that doesn't even like include in this because there's one girl and like, you know what I mean? Like there's no, I see, yeah, I guess, you know what well, I mean? This is so there's, there's no other threat, I guess, or yeah. Potential like, love it's not, yeah. To me, it's when like, they they aren't dating. It's one of those shows where they're going to end up dating at the end. Or a guy Yeah. 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 Huh. Did I just trigger something? Wow. Do I not like or I don't know. I'll have to figure it out. Right, um, I like or guy but yeah, I mean, or is interesting where there's only really two options. Um, and, but you do know who's going to win. And that did bother me about or Like I do like things despite this. I just, I wish there was like actual tension, sure. I guess. I, I guess I wish you couldn't watch 47 seconds of a show and know who the winner would gotcha. be. Yeah, for sure. All right, let's pass it to Chica. Chica, what's your first negative trope? My first negative trope. Um, This might be interesting. I think it counts as a trope, right? When the characters get sick. And then you gotta go and like take care of like that's a yeah. trip. Right? Oh, like when they have like a yeah. cold and they're dead or the like a coma. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like if somebody's sick, you should stay away from them. I don't know why. <laughs> like they make it a thing where oh, the love interest has to come and take care of them. And there's always this thing, which is like another mini thing that's like I actually hate for real is the backwash water seat. Please, just give them the water directly. Just give them the water directly. Do not like put the water in your mouth and then you go and kiss them and then give them the water that way. Well, I have like, never seen what this. Is what is this, this in? Uh, there on, is this in all of them, I swear. <laughs> all <laughs> anime have this, got it. It's in, it's in, at least I see it a lot in shoujo stuff. It's in Maid Sama, it's in Oran, it's in like, I'm telling you, they anytime somebody is sick. There is some weird backwash. I'm going to feed you water. I'm going to give you from my mouth. Are they birds? No. This? Is, this, is this like... What the hell is this Beastars? Is this Beastars? I know what she's talking about, though. I, I, I definitely... Well, well, it's not necessarily inherently like just the water, but it's like, oh, let me feed you. Let me do this. Let me do right. that. Oh, baby, let me baby you. Oh, it's supposed yeah. to be so romantic. And it's like, like no, no, it's gross. Like, I, it's gross. It's so, I get so agitated. Like, please... Don't do that anymore. <laughs> I hate it. Like, but especially just the feeding whatever liquid. And they don't even have to be sick. Like that that mini thing. It happens even without the whole sickness trope thing. If my but, wife did that to me, I throw up. And I <laughs> right. my wife and stuff. Like, <laughs> like yeah, because it's like it's one thing if you it's like you know, like y'all eat the same things. Okay. But like, I don't what did you eat before this? Like, did you floss? I don't know. I can't. I can't. I can barely handle it. But really, the backwash thing, no. So the water thing of the of the sickness, but then in general, just sickness and like, okay, you're sick. Um, I I don't know if you have family. You should have family and maybe a medicine closet so that you don't have to go out and get like pills or whatever. Like you have everything yep. there for you and stuff. But especially in these COVID times, you should just figure it out. Figure it out and then live through it. I agree. I, I, so I, suck it up. I yeah. like it. <laughs> I like that too. I, I think like with that trope, maybe not along the lines of baby birding uh, the, the other, but just like they have like a cold and it's like they're on their deathbed. It's like they that, cannot yeah. function to save their life. I'm like, I went to work when I had mono. Like, Suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> Akane went to the hospital with a cold in Yamada Kun. That is that happens. That's just good yeah. health insurance. That, is yeah. that what it is? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. maybe it's like our American like pay as you go. Sort of. yeah. It's just like okay, go to the hospital with this cold. Or I don't yeah. know. Flu. Like they is maybe as a translation thing. Maybe they translate the flu or a, a sickness similar to the flu as cold. So maybe we don't get it as uh, like literally but like yeah that's a great point that yeah like a cold could literally mean like like pizza life or death. death and it's yeah. like what's going on here what yeah 
There must be something we're missing. I don't know. I got watch party. And we have flu shots. Bird people. It, the, well, oh, I hate it. I hate it. She said I, like, Mama. That was like your first anime, right, Pete? Like it, it, it woke in something in me. Yeah, okay. <laughs> was it? Oh wait, is Pete into baby birding? Is that what we're Are you no, into don't that? Kink, don't kink shame unless that's your kink. <laughs> I mean, I think it's different. I'll give you this, Pete, if it's alcohol. Maybe. Ooh, that oh, because that has like a, like a like a no, natural it's just, it's just disinfectant. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, but like that's it. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna write this down. I'm gonna go ahead and say even then. Okay. No. Hold on. I, yeah. For me, no. But for Pete. Alcohol makes sense. Got it. But no. All right, I'm writing this down. Thank you. Uh, okay, Pat, let's toss it over to you for your first negative roll. Sure. All right. Um, ooh, which one do I want to do first? Uh, I guess I'll do this one first because I, uh, I say positive things about the show as well mm-hmm. that I bring up in this uh, in the next one. So, uh, fade to white. Uh, so. Basically, when a show uh, builds up to to some massive reveal or climactic moment, or it could just be the end of the show, and they give you a figure to middle finger, you know, by either a and I, I put I divide this up so we could all talk about these is a they either don't answer any of your questions, b they expect you to read the manga or a sort other source material, you know, they they tell you to go do that, or c the literal fading to white and leaving you to like figure it out, so to speak. So for shows that do it poorly for type a, where they just don't answer your questions and keep in mind, these are shows I kind of liked, or at least somewhat did uh, death parade really like that show does not answer any of the questions that it really poses uh, up until the end beyond mm-hmm. the main, uh, the main character. And even then some things are left very open-ended. It's unclear. Uh, I think the more obvious example of this might be uh, Faina, the pirate princess, oh, yeah. where the ending, it's just like. Days, <laughs> like Deus is Machina, literally it's really like, bad. God falls from the sky, practically, and solves their problems. And oh, by the way, Faina's a god or something like it's just it's like the most ridiculous. I, I don't know. Alexander the Great's involved somehow too. Like there's just all this, or not Alexander? Sorry. Um, and he's baby birding her. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we're talking. Wait, no, yeah, cut yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, and her and their power system is based on uh, their personality. Yeah, no. Uh, so and then maybe for examples of shows that did type B, which was the expecting you to read source material, I put cheeky sort of because it, it it gives some semblance of an answer but it doesn't really fully finish the story at what least in my it? perspective cheeky cheeky is sourced from a novel right so my that point is, is any of the sources that oh, did it finish the what the novel had or did the it, novel there... is only available in japanese i have no idea ah, there <laughs> you wow, go. That makes also, sense. to me yeah. it felt like there was more to the story that it left open-ended uh some less serious examples would be like gamers or boarding school juliet which are like obvious shows that were just like go read the manga promo you know you're not yeah. Gonna, yeah promo material and then uh i'd say a comic got kill which isn't fair to the show itself because it kind of got uh it caught up to the manga as it was airing and then it had to kind of come up with its own answer. And then the manga went a completely different direction from what they wrote. So it's kind of unfair for the show to be blamed for that. But also they kind of didn't give a very clear ending that was kind of just, oh, yeah, uh, Akame is going to go walk somewhere. And and that's it. Um, and then for type C, the literal fading to white and like you have to figure it out yourself that I thought did it poorly Akudama Double drive. drive. Yep, I knew you were gonna say that. I, I knew you. Know, I know you knew. This whole thing that they're striving the whole show to get to—that that's the whole purpose of all of these people dying and sacrificing their lives for these two kids. That I guess because their kids were supposed to feel sympathetic for them. Of course. Oh, they get to it. They get to it. What does it do? It literally fades to white. Like. Fuck you, you know, like seriously, no and no idea it could have. There is no hint as to whether it's paradise that they get to. It's no hint if it's a nuclear wasteland. We don't know. No one knows. And you can't know because it's original source and it fucking. Oh, man, that made me so mad. And just to contrast this shows that I think that have done this trope well, this fading out uh, trope. Well, one would be Cowboy Bebop at the end with. uh with the final conflict with Spike. You Did cowboy. He, yeah, see, 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 so long space cowboy. Like, 
does he die? Yes. We don't technically know. No, we don't actually know if he dies or not. He, you actually don't. Spoiler, and, he it, does. It, he could be alive, right? But like, again, you're able to figure out with context clues that, and, and it answers your question, Sue. Another good example, I think, would be, uh, and a more recent example would be Odd Taxi, where, uh, and we're going to pretend that the movie doesn't exist. Nope, it does not exist. Quick. Uh, but the season itself, gives you a very clear answer at the end of the show. Okay, yeah, he she's she's in the car. She knows he knows or vice versa like yeah, they don't show him getting killed, but like what's going to happen when the when the sc- screen fades to black? Like so I think that those are good examples of shows that they may leave you to figure it out, but they at least give you enough to go on to make a very like solid clear thesis or or point uh or or to make their own point, right? They give you enough for the uh <laughs> like for the meaning of the show to exist the other shows i thought didn't or it, it, all in their own separate ways to defend shiki really quickly not to say Please that it has it. a perfect ending or anything mm-hmm. but the last time it was even published was 2002 so i don't think they were I- trying to sell stuff Again, I was I was saying sort of like, again, I thought that that one was like just a little bit where like, I don't know, the the priest drives away with the vampire. Like, OK, like the like what is the whole point that he is defending this person causing a plague? Like, I don't know. That, that's a whole different discussion. Yeah. Like, you know, but like I get I get what you're saying. Like it, it that one was the worst of my examples, I think. Which is why I went yeah. first. <laughs> yeah, I think that's more of like a the, the overall thing is still ongoing, but the localized event has been finished. <laughs> um for that but pete you were gonna say something i think like my defending of this stuff would comes from whether it is um original or source material so for something like akudama drive that's an original content they can make it anywhere that they want and then they present it in that manner i like i get those criticisms something to me along the lines of like maybe like land of the lustrious i know we did an episode about that where like mm-hmm. it leaves so many questions on the table season two win oh we're probably never getting it like i don't blame the story for not getting a second season like it's not their fault but like yeah. when it's something like wonder egg priority whether it's something like akudama drive where it's something like fane of pirate princess these are original stories that are written to be 12 to whatever episodes and that's the route you take that's just that's just bad yeah i should have specified that too like i thought of um what, what's the one you just said? Sorry. Um, oh, uh, Land of the Lustrous. I did think of that. I think the reason why I, I brought up specifically like Boarding School Juliet and like gamers, it's like, like Land of the Lustrous was written clearly with the thought that it was going to get a season two. Yes. You know, like the way it finished, it didn't, you know, go, oh, they're about to kiss. And then, oh, surprise, you got to wait another season for that. Like, you know, like that's what like Born School Juliet or the gamers, uh, those kinds of shows that are meant to sell do. Right. Like they tease you and they want you to keep reading versus Land of Lustrous. It's just, oh, surprise, 12 episodes are done. Mm -hmm. We're expecting you to see episode 13, but it doesn't exist. So, you know, so it doesn't like tease you along. It it more just was like, well, it's just unfinished. And I think that there's a lot of shows that are examples of that. I think um, another original you that you mentioned, um, Death Parade, mm-hmm. where, like, I definitely think they thought they were getting more content. They start this whole thing with, like, a higher organization and stuff, and then right. just nothing ever comes of it. Um, but it's just never addressed in, like, a satisfying way. And then there's just no more content. So, like, why are they playing pool with the with the planets? Like, who are these people? Oh, yeah. Like, it's kind of like hinted at, like, oh, why did you establish these eight different characters that are in the background? Oh, well, they didn't. Uh, uh, whatever. I, I try to give some, like, leeway to shows like, there's a show called, like, Stars Align, where it was scheduled for 24 episodes, and then the, the studio made the first season, and then they're like, no, nah, we're not going to do the second season. Same thing with Wonder Egg Priority. That was scheduled to be 24 episodes. The director went to the hospital twice, and then they just did a recap 13th episode. I try to give some leeway to shows like that when more context is available. Yeah. But, yeah, the stuff like Boarding School Juliet, where it's, it's written to be promo material, and it's like, I get it. Okay. Oh, I, I respect the craft, right? Yeah, but yeah, it's yeah like, I respect the hospital. But still, but doesn't mean it's good. I, I think it's right? fair criticism. Right, right. Okay. 
Chica, do you have anything you want to mention about this one, or should we move on? Mm. No. All right, cool. All right, so those are our negatives. We're going to get back into the positives. Um, my trope um, that I chose for my second one is uh, loving and supporting parents. Um, both parents being alive, both parents supporting their children. I think a lot of the times we see it where in order for a character to develop from being like the underdog, he has to have like a dead parent or both. And that way, like he had to struggle to get to where he was. But then we have anime where you see the characters progressing in sort of a similar manner and they have loving and supporting parents. And I wish we saw that more. Um, a couple examples that I wrote down, uh, mob psycho. I, I even like mob psycho a lot because they have an entire arc devoted to mob saving his parents which I think is really fun. Uh, Bochi the Rock that recently aired. Um, her dad monetized her YouTube so then she could get money when she was a teenager. Like, I think that's really fun. That's a, a modern thing to do uh, to support your kid when maybe they didn't know that. Um, Yuri on Ice. Um, when their kid, when Yuri, yeah. when Yuri was struggling, th their parents took care of him at the hot spring. And um, I also wrote down, it's kind of like a kind of cheating, kind of not cheating, but Cladad. Um, the main character's wife's parents are super involved in the child's like upbringing to the point where like, they're essentially the, well, they are the caretakers. Um, I, I really like like the, the idea of like, you don't need to have a missing parent to have, um, growth as like the main character. Like you can, you can do it with supporting parents. So that's my trope. Yeah, I really like that as well, just seeing supportive parents. I saw that in Whisper of the Heart, which is very abnormal, where it's like the girl uh, wanted to start a writing career and it was during like testing times and her parents were just like, well, if this is what you want to do, like go for it, which is very different. Mm -hmm. But I was like, oh, I like that. Like, yeah, if that's what she wants to do, let's go. You know, I like that. Um, where else have I seen it? I know I've seen it more often than not, but, um... I know a lot of anime, hmm. they have, like, a supporting parent, but it's never, like, both. Oh, yeah. Like, that's the rarity, is when you have two Yeah, parents, when it's both of them. Yes, yeah. like, being there, supporting yeah. them together. Like, Ma go son at yeah. the baseball game, or something <laughs> like that. Like, need more of yeah. that. Madoka Magica, she has both of her parents, um, and it's contrasted with, like, another character who doesn't have parents. Mm -hmm. Um which is is nice and like i don't know i feel like it's like sometimes a little rare i mean it depends on the magical girl show there's tons of them but like a lot of times magical girl shows like deal with like the isolation of that role um and like found family with like the friends and like all of that and so mm -hmm. yeah, i guess that was nice to see um i guess you could sort of count sailor moon if you really wanted to it's like I a <laughs> It's like a squint. It's a squint, like, because, like, the dad, some, he, she has a dad. Like, you just don't know where he is. But, like, <laughs> she has one. He shows up sometimes. Like, they're, her, I, I, I like her parents, but they're very, like, comedic, I feel like. Like, yeah. Isaki, like, do your homework, like, stop being so lazy. And she, she has, like, a very traditional, like, early teenager relationship with her parents where she's like, Mom, I don't want to yeah study and everything and like i'm sure they're fine parents and stuff but also they don't notice that she's out fighting evil by moonlight so i don't <laughs> they don't or that they adopted her daughter yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they... <laughs> you know people actually do they used to do that you know back in the day uh many moons ago yeah but that, yeah, that one's a little different because it involves time travel and not right, you, right. Saki getting knocked up by her college age boyfriend. Ooh, At the uh, time, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. depends on which version you're going. Yeah, yeah but the older version. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Oh, did they age him down in Crystal? In uh, Crystal, he's his original age. So oh. the they made him older in the in the older oh, anime. Is he younger in the manga? He's younger in the source material. Yeah. What a weird creative decision to make. How interesting. Yes. <laughs> it's... Just rewind my comment from like 15 minutes ago <laughs> yeah. about fan service and why it exists, right? And then replay yeah. that. 
And there you go. <laughs> That's why that creative decision was made, right? Like, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, th- I think part of it is that, like, like when you're younger, you think dating someone older is like cool, but like that goes for dating a high school kid when you're in like middle school, which is like still a bit weird, but not as weird as dating a college kid when you're in middle yeah. school. <laughs> so. Yeah, that's illegal. <laughs> it's a, in fact, yeah, it's a crime. I'm calling the police right now. Uh, yeah. But luckily, she's first girl, so ah. it's fine. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, actually, the rule, the laws in Japan say that. Shut up, Pat. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, 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 sh- yeah. yeah, exactly. Like, shut up, Pat. Exactly. Thank you, because <laughs> fuck that. Like, um. I, the only like, yeah. I, I guess one thing I just want to touch on before moving on to the next one was like when you have like both supportive parents. Um, sometimes I, I like the dynamic of like when the parents are like too supportive, like pushing it, like like you have to be a doctor type of thing. I feel like we don't see like that a lot in anime. I feel like with those types of parents are always saved for like the side characters. Um, I know yeah. I know we do get it as the main character sometimes, but I don't think it's like as prevalent. So I think you can do it. A multitude of ways to still like build the character of like the main person. You know who had supportive parents? That character from <laughs> Bang Dream. I I blocked Bang that show Dream. out of my memory. The no, one, did. The, no, the, did. The, the one girl with an arc who like helped run the bakery, whose parents like had to take on because like her mom was sick. Anyways, um. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay, was, yeah. Uh, Let's not mention Bank Dream anymore this episode. Okay, Miles, I'm gonna pass it over to you for your second sure. positive one. Yeah. So my next positive trope is everything in Bang Dream. Uh, girls <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, you set me okay. up. <laughs> so I have. Okay, so we're, we're cutting from three to two. Okay, I'll go with uh, the shorter one for the sake of us not being here until midnight. Um. So I love stargazing scenes in romance. Damn right. I love them so yeah. much. Um, yeah, I do. think it is so romantic. I have three reasons that I have written down for why I like them. Um, the first one is that space and like large distances and stuff are just like, it's like a layup of a metaphor uh, for like overcoming trials and stuff. Um, there's an example in Kaguya-sama Love is War where uh Shiragane like harkens back to the tale of Princess Kaguya talking about like how he himself would find the way to get to the moon for her and like that's a hard thing to do um you know and so like it leads itself well into that two um it presents a nice isolated moment for the couple that is both like confined but also infinitely vast which I think is a really neat contrast right so in order to stargaze you need to be in the dark uh the dark is inherently one second. Spooky. Is inherently spooky. <laughs> is inherently confining, right? Mm. Um, like you can't see very far alongside of you, so it gives a nice, intimate, um, feel to the couple. It lets them sort of be alone, but then it also opens everything up. You have the entire vastness of space. You have like all of the uh, potential and unlimited infinity that that represents, right? Um, it it sort of feels deep. like I I really like stargazing. Um, you are wearing a you NASA know. shirt right now too, so check. <laughs> I out. am, yeah. And then I have my Europa and Trappist one um, <laughs> posters there too, um, which is my favorite exoplanet system. I know everyone has one, so we can yeah. talk about that. Yeah, we'll after. talk about the, the other, <laughs> our space podcast. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I, I like that. Like, I like that contrast between how intimate it is, but then how every o- possibility is open. Um, and then my last and third reason was, I think space is neat. <laughs> so That's there's those one. three reasons. Um, but yeah, so I guess, like, you guys don't have to like that, but what is everyone's favorite, like, romance date trope is, I guess, what I'll ask, because Ooh, yeah. people might not share the same passion for stargazing that I do. In anime, oh, um, big fan of going to the festival, then watching fireworks. Big fan. I love the cherry blossom scenes. Oh, great one. Yeah. That's a great one, too. Especially specifically for anime. Because, like, like, I don't know, for me, I feel like with romance, like, I like seeing them dress up. 
you know, like the yeah. wear dress or, or so a pizza example is a good one too, where they all wear their yukatas usually, right? Or something. I'm thinking more along the lines in general. Where I like it when it's like, oh, we're going out to see a theatrical show. So we're going to dress nice rather than just wear like street oh. clothes or whatever like that. But that combines with we're going to the fair wear a yukata, a yukata. We're going cherry blossom picking. Maybe I'll wear a nice sundress or something, right? Like, so it's like, yeah. The, there's something to like make you see someone in a, and not in a different lens, but maybe, uh, maybe it is a different lens, yeah, right? Like, I, think it is. I don't know. Yeah. I look like shit right now, but when Ooh. I put on a suit and a tie, like I, I feel good about myself. Right. Like that kind of thing. Right. Like, I, yeah. I don't know. You still look up. Like I was like, okay. <laughs> there's something so shit? nostalgic yeah. for that, for me of like, you know, I, I guess I'm like married now, so I don't have any more first dates lined up for me. But like when you're going on a first date with like, someone you really like and you're like trying to get the perfect outfit and everything and like mm -hmm. I, like that feeling is just is very nice so i that's a great thing would you that. recommend this yeah. uh, ava shirt that i'm wearing for a first date i i would say yeah and then what you should do is talk about that groping scene that i mentioned earlier on your first date ah, and you should talk about how the hospital it's like scene? yeah and then talk about the hospital scene like go on like and explain that like it sounds really weird but that like when you really think about the symbolism behind it is and it's very good first date material uh, okay i'm writing this down so okay <laughs> so i got baby burning alcohol into my mouth and then talking about groping got it yep this i is... thought you were married too me what yeah i thought you were married too Oh, someone, Wait. someone cue the uh -oh. sad piano music right now. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Oh, this is getting clips. Uh -oh. and... oh, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, Dan. Miles and Pat are going to roast me for the next five years about that statement. All right, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Um, yeah, no, you can wear like a nice like anime. I think like the subtle type, you know, with the symbols. So it's like, oh, what symbol is that? Lead into like talking about anime. Yeah. All right, word. Um, um, yeah. He's married to the grind. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm married to the game right sorry. now. I'm so sorry. It happens. Don't worry about it. Life's, life's yeah. great. Miles. No, because, like, you went to Japan and then, oh, sorry. I did. Unfortunately, I went to Japan by myself. Uh, but, Miles, question. Does okay. stargazing apply in space? Uh, yeah, as long as you're appropriately stargazing, I suppose. Okay. Like, as long as you're appreciating uh how small we are with someone close to you gotcha i okay, think cool, it cool. it counts cool huh? let's uh before, before, before we keep roasting me let's go to chica for her next i think one. it's important to note that pete did go to japan with someone and it was his <laughs> his friend who he has a completely platonic relationship first of with. all i went to japan by myself i met up with two friends one friend who he has a completely Okay, right. we don't we don't need to get into that's the, why, the Pete lore right now. I'm sorry, that's why I thought you were married. I was like, oh, that's nice. I thought I'm you could sorry. tell by my background I'm very single. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if my stuff wasn't, but okay, okay. All right, enough about me. Let's talk about you. Okay, okay. Something that I like, right? I love, I love an underdog story okay i'll never get over it injected into my veins you have um so many examples of it it's yu yu haku show you have um i love tournament arcs too guys and it is what it is but it's like yu yu haku show i like seeing it um i guess to a lesser extent with my hero i like it with demon slayer i like um hmm I guess Attack on Titan in the beginning, sort of. Yeah, definitely not. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like I, I, I love an underdog story just because, like you know, so many people can resonate with dealing with others that don't believe in you and like don't believe in that strength or fire that you have, and then you just prove them wrong, and it's the best feeling and stuff to prove them wrong. I have not experienced this in a very long time. But when I did like track, I loved cuz it's like people would just be like, "Oh, she's not fast." Then I would just whiz right past them. So, I I just love an underdog story. How do you feel about Haikyuu? I love Haikyuu. Oh, oh I love Haikyuu. It's my, like one of my faves. Yes. How do you feel about Hinata as a character? 
Okay, stop triggering me. Pete. Hey, this is what you get. <laughs> Wait, do you not do you not like Hinata? I cannot stand him. Oh. <laughs> but you are welcome to like him. The only reason I don't like him is because in season one, he talks about how obsessed with volleyball he is. And then like in episode three, someone has to explain him what a setter is. And it's like, you don't like volleyball, dude. <laughs> If someone's explaining to you what yeah, I mean, I like, I mean, Hinata's like, uh, I like him. I feel like my favorite was Ushikawa, right? I think that's his name. Like, the, the, the guy, the guy with the thighs. But it's okay. Well, is it okay? It's Listen, okay. We'll, we'll allow it. Yes. He's a senior. We'll allow it, please. I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't, like, people who don't do taxes are not attractive to me. But I'm just saying, like, he was, like, a very strong, um... A strong opponent, and I just love how they sort of rose against him and everything. I prefer him as a character, but Hinata was kind of cool for me. But yeah. I like Ushikawa too, because he doesn't like Hinata. So I, that's like a big <laughs> Actually, question. he loves him. Uh, he loves well, him. I have to watch more Haikyuu to get that. Okay, I haven't, I haven't got that far then. <laughs> I'm trying to think of uh, do I like, like the zero to hero or like the hero to zero back to the hero? I do like a good underdog story. I, I think it like, mm. oh man, I'm trying to think of like there's examples of like where I don't like it. Man, Black Clover. See, I have a very love hate relationship with that show because I think the first like 45 episodes of that show are utter dog water, and it's one of the worst yeah. shows I've ever seen. And then it randomly gets good. Um, yeah, it's really hard to explain why a show does that flip, but it does. But because yeah. like I love me, all you like, have to do is watch forty eight episodes like, and then it's great. Like Asa's just like he does like a shit ton of push ups and then he's better than everybody. Like I guess that's it's not like, like what? Yeah, yeah, it's not like I guess it's not like my favorite type of um underdog. Oh man, that's a good one. I really like Kanata. That, that's like that's the first one that came to my head was like the little giant yeah. aspect of volleyball and just how much and I think Haiku does a great job of explaining how much of a difference height makes. It doesn't matter if the other person's yeah. better than you. If you're taller than them, there's a good chance you're just naturally better than them. And I like that aspect because I played competitive sports growing up and it's like, you know what? I might be better shooter than this dude in basketball, but he's six foot eight and he's making the team over me. And like I get it. Mm. And so I really like that aspect of like overcoming the giant, I guess, in this aspect, and he, yeah, I will say Haiku Haiku does that well. Like it doesn't make like Hinata is never overpowered or anything. He gets yeah. better. He finds his place, but he's and he's like one of the best players on the team for sure. But he's never like the sole like he's not carrying the team right. Like yeah. he's, yeah. he's found a place on the team. And so, as much as he annoys me, um, his arc is is very good. Yeah. I think that's just like a testament to why high cues of the goat. Miles. It is. I gave it a six, ranging to an eight, depending on the season. <laughs> okay, that's like giving Bochi an eight. All right, sounds good. Uh, <laughs> anybody else have anything to say about um, the underdog star that they want to talk about? All right, Pat, we'll toss it to you. Sweet. Uh, so this is a trope that I, I definitely prefer, or, or I enjoy it when it's done and when it's done well. And that's the uh, everybody dies trope, you know, or everyone has to die sort of thing. Like I enjoy the trope where, uh, or I enjoy it more specifically where everyone's death either means something or is impactful to the story, you know, mm. or, or or there's some sort of comeuppance about it as well. So there's uh, I thought uh, to name some shows that did it well. These are shows that I was just roasting. Uh. Akadama Drive, I think, does a really good job of building up each of the characters that are involved, and then their deaths are all uh, relevant to their character, relative to their backstory, and they are a comeuppance, right? They are all criminals who... Oh, the the Suicide Squad. Die. Yeah, yeah, a Suicide Squad's another good example, right? But, I, but at the end of the day, they, they do all actually die, you know? Uh, and, like, especially Swindler, I love that she starts out as the normal person. She is not the person that was meant to be the Swindler. What does she become? She... Lies her lies and cheats and hacks her Chef's way through kiss. the Chef's whole system, kiss. and she's the swindler the at character. the end of the day, right? Like that's a really well thought out way. And then she still, you know, dies in her Jesus on the cross moment, literally. Yeah. Um, I was taking 
bets on my head if you had mentioned the <laughs> the the crucifixion aspect of yeah, it. Yeah, right. Which <laughs> yeah. which was fun, but it was like a, and you know it, it's because Jesus was a swindler. Yeah. Duh. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just making up war. Just go with <laughs> it. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna just let. Yeah, that's, that's a tough one. Uh, I, I'll. Uh, uh, everyone, time. please email Pete. If... <laughs> what do you say, anime at gmail dot com? Yeah, I'm confirmed. I'm not part of this. Uh, let's. Uh, so, uh, so I, another example though too. Akamega Ak- 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 Kill. They all and they acknowledge it in the show too. They're like, yeah, no, we we're killing bad guys, but that doesn't make us good guys. We're still assassins. We're still murderers. We're still like we're bad people and i I like that they their deaths all had something to do with their personalities a good example would be leona where she as she's dying she realizes she's gonna die or can't regenerate her health well enough she goes and dies in an alleyway because that's what she wanted because she was the cat girl that was a very um like loner type and that's very on brand for a stray cat to just want to die on its own and not bother anybody with it right so like that sort of thing those comeuppances are are things i really like about it I think shows that do it okay are 86 and Fate. Uh, 86 does it pretty well, I think, because it, it, uh, each character at the end of the day does serve a purpose, and uh, and it also helps raise the stakes in the show, like we talked about earlier, I think, where uh, some shows don't have stakes because people just don't die. People die in 86, and I like that. you know. And it felt, uh, and it felt warranted, I guess. Uh, Fate does it okay, I guess, because it's a death game, but then they also don't all die. Right, they some of them get reborn, some of them get sent back in time. Some of the servants or masters don't die. I don't know. I can't get into that. I think fate does it okay, and I think the only one I could really think of that does it like poorly, uh, at least anime related, is uh, School Days. <laughs> uh, school wow, Days, just what an example. I know, I know. I could not. I was sitting there like going through shows. School, school Days does it perfect, is what you're saying, right? Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. That, I'm saying that it does perfectly. Um, no, I don't know. It's just like really random. And dumb. That whole show's final three episodes or four episodes are really dumb and random. But I, I think that that's in one where, oh, suddenly everyone's dead. Like, what? Why did this happen? You know, what? What? What was the logic? I don't. Know. I wish more shows had the balls to do that to just kill off a main character at the end of the show too. Like, I guess that's a a sidetrack to what I was just talking about specifically. But like, it'd be cool. I I, I would enjoy that more. I think. Uh, I don't. Know, I guess Bebop's a good example of that too. Maybe where. Yeah, it it tells the full story of Spike. Uh, mm. uh, I won't spoil I won't spoil Girl in the Gone for Miles here, but you know, there's some aspects of that and that involved too. People will die, or people do leave and vanish and die. It's like it's part of life, and I think that that's a trope that I really enjoy exploring. I have a question. It's sort of a can. It's like part of like what you were saying about mm-hmm. how the lead character could die. Do y'all think that Luffy's gonna die at the end of One Piece? No chance. No, no chance. I, really? I, no chance. I don't. Know I think it would be awesome. I I know so little about One Piece as well. How, how I think many be- oh, okay. characters have died in One Piece? We have Ace, and then we have the love of my life. We have Ace. Yeah. Nobody yeah. dies. I, I was actually talking about this about Miles. Does um, a black die or something? No. I I think there's like, two me- there's like two memorable deaths in One Piece through like 1,100 chapters. I think it'd be so out of character to have that in one piece to be honest it's like, well he's talked about the gears right because he has these different gears and every time you use them it takes like certain like years off of your life if i'm remembering the oh. theories or lore c- correctly so now that he's even gone to gear five, five yeah. right like yeah so... i feel like if he gets the one piece if they get it and then he proceeds to die Everybody would scream, but that would be so cool. <laughs> so that w- I, I don't agree. want him to die, but still would be super cool. However, I will counter this with literally the other. Uh, it's on my shirt, actually. My mm. my very in in season Happy Holidays Naruto shirt. Mm. We watch Guy and what's his face, um, Rock Lee, literally open the eighth gate of whatever that is supposed to kill them when they use it. And then they live, you know, so I think that that like in a very synonymous sort of like power system to the gates. So I would I would argue that he would somehow find a way to survive or something like I I, I don't know. I, I would love True. to see that, though. That would be so you like you said, it would blow up the Internet like <laughs> Twitter. would yeah. go down if that happened and how sick would it be? But that's there's no way. Right. Like, surely not. 
I I could see a reason for it. I wish you guys read Berserk because I would love to have you guys' takes on whether Gut should die at the end of Berserk. Or He's not. gonna die, one hundred percent. He should die. <sighs> he should die. Okay. Well, that, that answers my question. <laughs> I, <laughs> um, <laughs> half a step, and by half a step, I mean a full step away from anime really quick. I think Game of Thrones has sort of like ruined the zeitgeist on this oh. for like a little bit. Yeah. Because like, cause, like, I feel like people like saw a bunch of characters die in Game of Thrones and thought that it, it, it ha- like I hear it's like a so realistic. People like die randomly and like no one dies randomly in Game of Thrones. They die as a result of their decisions yep. and like what they do and like the consequences. Like there aren't any punches pulled, but now I see like a lot of people just want characters to die because isn't it neat if characters would die? And like, that's not, what you want pat obviously but mm-hmm. like i just i just feel like people mix that up for some reason like having meaningful deaths doesn't mean having numerous deaths or having like if your story doesn't need deaths you don't need death you know what i mean like it's like yeah yeah and it's just like or if your story does have deaths you don't need more of them you don't need to just like kill people every season or whatever like you know it's like ned stark dies because he's an idiot yeah <laughs> not yeah. because, not because it was so cool and realistic like for yeah. game of thrones by the way oh. season 1 which was I love game of thrones yeah forever ago. so yeah um snape kills dumbledore because <gasps> you bastard <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's what? <laughs> what? All right, wait until you learn who Darth Vader is, dude. What? What does Vader <laughs> mean in German again? What? what? Dude, I also <laughs> love um what's the movie that you were just saying? Star Wars? Uh no, Pitch Perfect. Uh, um that that's what I was mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, no, for sure. Somebody dies in Pitch Perfect? No, no, no. Is it oh. Anna, 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 Anna Kendrick's character watches Star Wars for the first time as like a favor oh. to the guy she likes, and he's like, "Oh, you weren't like surprised Darth Vader was like Luke's father," and she's like, "Vader means father in German," and he was just like, "Oh, oh okay." So, yeah, anyways, that's yeah. what Pete was referencing because Pete used to watch Pitch Perfect every night in college before going out. Well, after college. Every Friday night we oh, watch Pitch okay. Perfect. Oh, okay. After the college. Yep. Yep. <laughs> True story. I've seen Pitch Perfect. No lie, close to 50 times. Great movie. So you can perform the cup song. Can you do the cup song? I got my ticket for the long <laughs> <laughs> No one wants to hear me sing. Okay, so that's all wrap up that part. We're going to get to our final ones. The Our last negative trope. Pat actually stole mine that I was going to do, so I'm going to go back to my uh, my backup one, and that's self er- self insert MCs with like a harem or a love triangle, because most of the time they're just like basic dudes with no riz, and they get harems. And I'm a basic dude with no riz, so where's my harem? Like I don't get it. Like come on, you're married, dude. Oh, it should have been me. It should have been me. Damn it. Uh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> it should have been me. Uh, no, it's just like th- these stories. They like. They change up the story. It's not funny, Miles. No, I'm laughing. So Chica was doing world's smallest violin. Oh yeah. But but <laughs> just looking at it for like a second, it looks like she was saying that your penis was small. too small. Okay, let's not add <laughs> any more. I don't to know. This. I don't know. I wasn't sorry. I, I was not claiming that you did. <laughs> I do not. I do not know at all. Um, we're not getting into not. this. We're not gonna get to yeah. this. Yeah. This would be fun though to talk. I'm just kidding. Okay. Um, what? What? Okay. Um. No, but like. Um. <laughs> no. Uh. Like these stories, what they do is like that. All the male like main character leads are like the same, and then they like switch it up by like adding like the then like the girls have characters or like actual personalities, and like that's Ooh. where they like mix it up. But I just wish you could just make a self insert male like character essentially with like charisma or with a personality and make it a little bit more believable when you see someone like Usui for or Uzui from Demon Slayer like he's super jack super hot he's a hashira like it would make sense why he maybe he has a harem but then you see someone like uh Kazuya from Rent a Girlfriend and why does three girls want to be with him when he wears baseball pants outside like to me like it doesn't make any sense why this character would have it so i just wish like I, I hate this trope when you could just make the character more charismatic and stuff like that and 
actually maybe have a semi believable story. I'm gonna put that in quotation marks where it's just so far like out of the norm. I am going to give some, um, like exceptions to the case. Uh, Futuro from Quince. I think at least he has some personality and gives like actual constructive uh, criticism to like the girls, which would makes it seem like he's a little bit different than the guys. I, I do think it's a little exaggerated that he has a harem with them, but like, at least he has some way of talking to them. And then Hachiman from Origaru, because I just love his character development throughout the entire series. But yeah, like shows that just do it bad, rent a girlfriend, any 2000s harem, and uh, Boku Ben. So those, those are just shows that I just think that don't do it well. So For more defense of Futuro, only three of them like him at any given time. So I think that still qualifies for like a ha- anime, yeah, for sure. anime harem. <laughs> Look, I, I don't disagree, but that's showing restraint okay. in the genre. Okay. <laughs> it's... But then, like, it's mm. stuff like when you see, like, in, like, the reverse ways, where it's something like um, My Next Life as a Villainous, I think, like, uh, Katarina at least has, like, personality and funk and flair. Why I think guys would, like, gravitate towards that. You can do that to the, the guy main character, too, and it would be fine, but they just don't yeah. they just they, they make it all about like loser mc super hot girls well katarina also literally knows exactly what every person wants in a partner because she's played the game so much right but like yeah, part well, of the part of the story is that like it changes based off her actions because in the video game she's an actual villainess when she goes into the game she's no longer like the villainess so it, like it switches a little yeah. bit. I was disappointed because I wanted her to be evil. Yeah, but she she's a very nice person, very which nice. is nice. But I, I was hoping for evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it doesn't really make sense to me either. I think they should just look. I know it's supposed to be self insert, but then sometimes they look a little childish too, and it's like okay, this the self insert character is childish looking. He looks like. The lead in like SAO. (laughs) Kirito. Yeah. I've seen a little bit, but it wasn't for me. But still, he looks like that. And then all of a sudden, there's like, like big titty girls just Mm. like, yeah, I want to be with you. And it's like, why? This is, this was, I was thinking about including this on my negatives and it didn't make it, but it's a good time to talk about it because these shows uh, are. It's just like, it makes it feel like no one's ever been nice to a woman ever. And, like, I don't know if that's just, like, the author, like, telling on himself or whatever. But, like, it's because these people, like, you know, the the woman will be down on her luck. This dude will be nice to her one time. And then she'll be like, no one has ever been nice to me before and will never be nice to me ever again. So I love you. And that's, (laughs) that's. It's insane. Yeah. And it's the jump. Like, wow. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, there's, like, those nice guys that are, like. And, like, this is pretty common in, like, immature boys. So, like, I guess I get targeting, like, you know, teenager boys with this. But it's like, why doesn't this girl like me? I'm so nice to her. I, I've i been friend zoned or whatever. It's like a weird, bizarre world where all you need to do to have chemistry with someone is to treat them like a human. Um, right. Yeah. And-, and it's not even realistic to guys either. Because I feel like with if we're in the real world, then... You know, that happens and then you just like someone else. Like you don't just I mean, maybe you might hold a torch for a little while, but eventually you're going to like somebody else. Yeah. It's not going to just be like that one person. Yeah, no, exactly. And like, on, honestly, like it, the the reverse can happen too, where like mm-hmm. you're nice to a girl. Maybe she hasn't had someone be nice. And then she like likes you because of that, but you're not interested in her. But like that's never represented, um, right? Because the guys never have any opinions on anything. They they are like, you know, this isn't. I, I like I don't know how to say this like weirdly. Like it's not weird to be asexual, but like the characters are weirdly asexual, where they're like not actually asexual, but they just don't notice any sexual advances that are made upon them. F. Mm-hmm. Um. And because they can't, you can't ruin that, like, will they, won't they status quo yeah. that is, like, the premise of, of the show. Like, you can't ever commit to anything. It's like 
there's sort of like why queer baiting happens, right? Like if you commit to something, then it's real and you have to develop it and everything and you can't just play off of that dynamic. So well said. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> Rewind before we move on to Miles. Oh, uh, sorry, Bad, do you have something? Well, as you say, I agree that like queer baiting is a great example of that too, though, or 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 the way that it happens in anime, I think is a great like tie-in to that specifically, like because like, it's it's so it happens so often, and the the will they yeah. won't they is so such a big part of it, and I I don't think you were wrong to to say like they come they're not written to be asexual, but they almost come off as if they are, you know, like that, and I think that that's where. Uh, the frustration is for me with a lot of this yeah. trope too. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure that that was like clear because I don't like. Yeah. Like, being asexual is fine and great and everything, but like, it's, yeah. where they written, it's like not the way anyone who's asexual I've met is like. It's like just being completely oblivious, and but in theory wanting to participate in sexual like relations with someone. I don't know. It's mm. just it's a weird, not very human interaction that they do for sure. For sure. I just, uh, but, but I guess to close out with this, I just wish they would stop making uh, harem MCs look like me. Uh, <laughs> Miles, you're up next. Yeah. Um... <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke, by the way. Okay. Uh... Okay. <laughs> Miles laughed. I got one. I, I just I, I was just like, I don't know if this is just self-deprecation. A little bit. Like, a little bit. Like, so... Okay. Um so I, I did have queer baiting, but I talked about that a little bit. So I'm gonna go with uh Horn Dog with the Heart of Gold is a trope that I don't like, where they have a character who is like generally like a jovial good person, helps people with their problems. It makes sense that girls would like him. Oh, but also they're problematically horny. And like that just breaks it for me you know what i mean where it's like the fact that they turn it down to like not try to grope someone for like 10 seconds is like an accomplishment to them because i just hate how like any kind of assault but especially like sexual assault and stuff can be played or like sexual harassment is like played for laughs so often yeah. in anime um you know so like we're currently watching a show for our watch club called space dandy and, you know, the character is, like, a genuinely, you know, good guy, but also he really likes grabbing people's butts and commenting on their breasts and is completely obsessed with that. And for me, that just, I can't, I just can't put it aside. It's a character flaw and it's not addressed. It's not treated like a character flaw. No one ever sits these people down and is like, hey, man. Uh, you can't do that. It's disrespectful or whatever, because it's a joke. It's a joke in the thing. But like, it, to me, it's just such a serious topic that like, I, I don't I, I can't, I can never get past it. It just completely ruins things for me that, you know, would otherwise be good. But for whatever reason, you need these anime characters who are just like, super horny and sometimes it's like side characters like Minata or Mineta or whatever his name is from like My Hero Academia um, isn't where... that the, his self insert the author's self insert is Minata me. I think it is god <laughs> I, I I could look it up but I'm pretty sure from what I remember but okay. yeah um, well god save us all right. um, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know uh, but there's <laughs> yeah um if i'm but... wrong in the comments please be nice yeah. <laughs> but i think that i think i was right but yeah yeah so like just characters like that like even like konosuba which is like a show i i do very much like like kazuma is just like too horny at times that it literally does detract from the show for me and you know it's it's like it if for me, it's hard to find the line between poking fun that that is happening and then also just, like, doing it, like, unironically or whatever, because it's done humorously. Like, how do you poke fun at a joke? Because it's still a joke, you know? I don't know if that makes sense, but it's, like, it's not taking something 
that's done seriously in making light of it. It's taking something that makes light of a serious subject and making light of it. And I, I just don't, I don't like that. What about someone like Kentaro from Golden Boy? Yeah. Um. Well, if we remember my Golden Boy episode, I, I believe don't. I said <laughs> Kentaro uh, was too horny for me. Um, yeah. You know, but he he's an example. And like, he, in my opinion, isn't like the single worst example because a lot of the stuff is played um like he's he's for sure like way too horny but like as far as like the groping and stuff goes a lot of that is played as like accidental which it's a weird thing because we've one we've already said we don't like that and we don't but two like intent matters and you know like and so even though i don't like that it's like i guess you can maybe forgive the character a little bit more if it's like hijinks that are like oh I, I tripped and i fell into the boobies like it, it's more of the author's fault like I, I just like the author for that more than i just like the character for that gotcha you know Ooh. um but i i mean i don't i don't like it you know and but there's definitely like a like a scale to sure. how much i just like it is there any character that is like just the right amount of horny for you then well i don't like being horny is fine, right? Like, people are allowed to be horny, and, like, you can have characters who are, like, sexual and, like, all of that, and it's it's fine. To me, the problem comes when, like, one is their entire personality, mm-hmm. right? Like, whenever, like, when the only joke that they ever make is being horny, and then two, when um, they do anything that in real life would get them hopefully arrested, right? Like, if you saw them <laughs> at a bar... And your main thought would be, I should fucking get them thrown out of this bar or call the cops or beat the shit out of them or whatever. Like that, that's where it's to me because it just gets, I mean, it gets played for light. And it's like, oh, like I grabbed your boobs because I'm horny. You can't do that. That's fucking insane. Like what a weird thing to just have be funny. Like it's not (laughs) funny. (laughs) Like it's not, you know. And nosebleeds, nosebleeds. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like, Because, like, no one ever has a character where they're, like, occasionally horny, it feels like. I feel like characters are either only ever horny or not horny. Like, in in some shows, like, obviously there are characters, like, I I don't, I'm generalizing too much. But the characters that get nosebleeds are always horny. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And honestly, like, but then again, they would just have to be in the middle, right? Like, it's not that they can't be horny sometimes, but when it's all the time, it's it's really excessive. And so, like, I don't know, why don't you make a realistic character and it's like, they take care of it. Like, people can take, they take care of it. And then it's like, oh, we're chill again. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Well, this is, so like, my dress up darling, which is something we've already brought up a couple of times for positive and negative reasons. But mm-hmm. uh, Gojo in that, sometimes looks at Marin and is like horny, but then he has business mode where he's not horny. He's doing all the measurements and stuff, but he's focused on what his craft is, what he enjoys doing. And he takes it like seriously. And so like, while I think it's definitely possible to argue that that show is too horny, I think that character is done in a realistic way where sometimes he's horny when he's looking at his more or less girlfriend in like a hot cosplay. But when he's, in business, I'm making a cosplay. I'm a seamstress guy, and I'm doing measurements and stuff. He's not horny during those scenes, which is yeah. kind of refreshing. So, very true. Okay, so let's uh, move over to Chica for your uh, last negative trope. Um, I think it's. I'm sort of conflating multiple things within this, but it's like taboo love. Or complexes. Vampire night? Yeah. <laughs> like, why do you want to be with your brother? Why? <laughs> I was in, like, what, in, what do you mean by this? Like, what? what is the... And then now I get it. Like, okay, that's what you mean by, like, taboo love. Like, not just like, oh, no, Romeo and Juliet. Like, no, it's like, no, like literal it's, love. Like, why do you want to be with your brother? Why is your other love interest technically your uh, daughter? <laughs> you right? You were raised. You're raised right with Sailor. Right, your daughter. Like, 
What? Oh shit! Yeah, that does happen in Sailor Moon. Wow. Yeah. Um. <laughs> like I, I don't I... like the complexes. I think it's weird. I just. Why do you want to be with your family? That's your family. Like you grew up with them. Even when it comes to Vampire Night, and there's like zero, right? I guess that could be a hot take because Yuki was raised with zero. So like. Loki family too so like it's just why do you want to do things with your family stop then there's um the age gap stuff so because so i'm just rolling all sure. of them in age the age gap stuff gross like and i don't mean when like for instance i know some people were fussing about the yamada kun thing y'all don't even know what you're talking about yeah, that's not that's, that. not that's not an age gap age isn't gaps like, is like oh this is 17 or something <laughs> like right yeah, people were complaining about that? Yeah. There were people complaining about, yeah. So there's that. There's some other new thing that's coming out, and they, Manga Mogara, Mogara labeled it like an age gap, and the it was like one Dog year. One. Oh, sorry. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the anime that's coming up next season. The girl, that one is the main th That is disgusting. He literally, one of his quotes, right? The girl is 16 years old. She has like a Yakuza family and her bodyguard goes to high school with her and he's interested in her and he's 26 and he tells her, I will be your mother, your father, your brother, and your lover. That is a direct quote. That's a weird from, thing to say. <laughs> right. It's very, it's very illegal. Like, no, I don't, no, I don't like the taboo stuff. I think, like, I don't know why they do it. And then that's the main thing. Like, when people really start shitting on shoujo, they always are talking about, oh, it's the age gaps. It's like, I get it because I dislike it too. And to be honest, they don't really have to do them. So, no. So, I don't like that. And I don't like the fam, the familial, ew. Cause that's just gross, but yeah. That is. Why gross. do we watch anime? You know, like it's fun to talk about. This? Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> so much of the shit is just like it's so fucked though, because it happens in so many of the shows too. Yeah. It's like, God damn it! All right. Yeah. Like the brother or sister complex thing, and it's like. Well, okay, so we did an episode. We did a watch club on Orimo, which is my little sister can't be this cute, and. I mean, I had multiple people that I am friends with who I trust their media takes in say that, like, oh, the incest that happens in that? Out of left field. No. The entire show was about younger sisters and older brothers banging each other. That was the core yeah. theme of the show. And so, one, I don't know how they didn't pick up on that. Um, and two, like... It's not the only show, right? I, I people, right. I don't, I don't, you know, I my shojo knowledge is quite limited compared to yours. So maybe age gap is a problem in shojo. I don't know. It's a problem one in just like media in general. To be yeah. freaking honest, people, you know, uh, but like two, like it's not like not shojo like stuff. Like there's a lot of incest. There's yeah. There's age gap stuff and like. Like, I mean, I'm again, I'm not trying to pour any, like, fuel onto a flames here, but there's a very popular Kyoto Annie show that has a bit of an age gap thing going on. Um, and so, you know, like, and, and, and like, superior, in, like, like, the power like, and balance. Yeah, power and balance, sort of like teacher stuff. And, like, I don't yeah. know. I, I mean, I kind of get it because it, people, like, I don't like authority is hot. Like I get it. You, you want like, and so like, but I do think that always portraying it as such a good thing is bad. Yeah. <laughs> Very yeah. brave take miles. Honestly, like, like really well done. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. That, you know, I think that incest is bad. Woo. What? I'll, yes. I'll say it. <laughs> yes. I, I, we're gonna get canceled, Miles, if you keep talking like that. Like, jeez. <laughs> well, I think one thing with, with this, with with anime specifically, is when we have like isekai and fantasy involved. And I'm going to absolutely direct this at Jobless Reincarnation, where the main character was when he passed away, like 34, but then is reborn into a child, and now he's like 16 years old. And we have the the great argument of, well, is he 16 or is he 50? And I'm in the camp that he's 
obviously a 50 year old like he retained all of his past memories but then that gets to like a whole other taboo subject of like well he's physically 15 and she's physically 15 then it's fine and then that causes just so much drama where it's, that's something i absolutely can't stand isn't that in oshinoko too what uh well it's a hot take so there is a line in oshinoko <laughs> Sorry, Pat. <laughs> so there is there is dialogue there when Aqua, who is the guy who's been reincarnated, basically says like he doesn't like he has some memories of his past life, but he the author at least intends to make him seem his age as far as he goes. So like he does retain some of his memories, but he's losing those. His identity is the other life is mm. a lot more firm. So I absolutely think there's room to argue one way or the other on that and i don't think that oshinoko really shows aqua in a good light based on what he's doing um he's trying to manipulate women to an end and it's it hopefully continues to be but at least currently is framed as bad to do that um so to me that's the difference where there's at least a, a plausible deniability also to doesn't it. hook and up with them he also well he kisses akane okay sure he does but um but yes he also isn't she's 18 he's actively trying to not be with these people yes. in like a romantic sense yeah um mm. so there's definitely some of it but it's not the same as jobless where it's a hundred percent clear that he has all of his memories and then also he is actively pursuing these people mm -hmm. yeah. romantically yeah. um but i do think there's room to criticize it for sure, sure if you would want no. to i was just thinking of those specific there's a panel where they had the the girl or something the the, the sister mm -hmm. oh, that, oh okay. that, that was that wasn't <laughs> real okay that was all like, okay. oh. that was all like fan translation stuff Good. Like the, one with the, the one with the condom yeah that wasn't real yeah, I know that wasn't real, but the sister okay. is totally going to be into the brother. That's okay, going to happen. Stop, stop this slander, Miles. She is not real. It's, it's, it's one. It will be framed as negatively, <laughs> uh, which I, I promise you, it'll be framed negatively. <sighs> but they're going to deal with it. Okay. Um. Let's anyways, get, okay, let's get Pat you're good now, Pat. <laughs> and it, it is my fault. I haven't watched Oshinoko yet, so no. It, worries about that at all that's okay uh, we actually spoil the manga too um that's what i i, I heard that uh like the whoa 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 wait, wait a minute here uh it's so hard to like because my headphones still like make a little bit of noise so I, yeah, it's so hard to like tell your ears not to like eavesdrop or to listen in when you're trying not to listen to something you know no, I I don't know. either way uh, I any, hear any other last comments before we move to pat's last one Okay, I think we all, as as a podcast, we are also saying incest is bad. So not just Miles, the entire podcast. All yes. right, Pat, take it away. You're the last one. I can't even make a joke. Like, I, I, I'm my, not part of that group. <laughs> my, my last positive one is I love incest. Whoa. Yeah. Oh. Come yeah, on, homie. Oh, I gotta edit that. No, um... I well, it's negative now, right? Isn't it negatives? Yeah, that's yeah. Good. yeah. All right, I get it. Miles, psych me out for a second. All right, this is the one that I think everyone uh, that listens to the show would also see coming. Uh, psychics. I I hate psychics. I hate shows that involve them. I hate the trope. I hate their existence. There's many different factors for that. I th I they feel very Deus Ex Machina when they are used poorly to be very clear too they can be done well i i, I think but i just I, generally speaking i don't think they are i hate it because their powers aren't visually defined very often you know you can't really see what's happening you just see someone staring and then something moving or something happening it's hard to tell who's strong or who isn't without the show just i don't know i guess just telling you or showing you it by who's alive or who dies it's hard to see someone training themselves or power scaling, I guess maybe is a better way to put it. Like it's hard to see how they develop and, and gain more skill uh, compared, especially compared to like other fighting styles or just other, I don't know, power systems, I guess, like physical strength. You see a six foot five Jack guy like Thorfinn uh, or is his name Thorfinn. Yeah, it's Thorfinn. 
no, Thorfinn's son. Sorry, no. I, I, Thor, Thorkel. Pardon me. You see someone like Thorkel in Vinland Saga, and you're like, yeah, that dude can fight. You know, uh, that that's just like an immediate reaction that you'll have. With psychics, it's hard to tell. You could have someone like Lil Fucking Eleven, who's like one of the most powerful beings to ever exist in the planet. You know? Oh, um, okay. like, <laughs> like, like in Stranger Things, I thought you were like trying to give a height and you were like the, the foot was little fucking oh, yeah, no. the, <laughs> the inches was 11. I was like, no, I've no, never no. heard that expression. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. So, um, and, and I also, I hate to, cause I think any battle involving psychics in theory should never be a competition. It should always just instantly end. It should always be the stronger psychic wins over the weaker one immediately because the power itself, the, the powers of psychics, and, and I say this in like the general sense, lifting things, moving things, manipulating minds, manipulating other things, that power is so in like OP and broken that it should never, they should never lose a fight in theory, right? And so I actually couldn't really think of shows specifically that do it poorly, uh, mainly because I don't watch shows that Just have psychics in it. Well, I I would say Shinsekai Yori, I really didn't like the psychic systems in that, but I know you guys both disagreed with me on that. And so, well, the yeah, fights there's are, I think the show's amazing, but I mean, the fights are literally them just going. Damn. Yeah, and like staring at each other. So I did, I will say though, show, uh, so the show, the only show that I could think of in anime specifically that did it well that I've seen was Elfin Lead. And that is specifically in Elfin Lead when they show, it is still a psychic power that, um, the main girl or, you know, the, the girls have the characters have, but it is at least visualized with the specter hands moving around and like showing you what they're doing. So I really appreciated that as a, I guess as a visual learner, even though I'm not uh, like it made it make sense to me. It gave me something to watch and to see and to observe. So that way it wasn't just them staring. And then suddenly there are ar someone's arm goes flying off or their head goes flying off. Like it gave, it gave some, uh, Touch to it. I thought shows that do it like okay in media, where uh, Stranger Things I think does it pretty okay. I kind of hate the whole Eleven just stares hard and then she gets a nosebleed kind of moment, you know? Like I hate that, but they do it better uh, in like uh, the Upside Down. I think they do a really good job of showing the, the their powers and 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 you know when they I, I, I don't know. I, I it's at least done to a point where I don't it doesn't bother me that that much. But it also does it poorly in the show, too, where randomly someone just goes like this and force pushes someone away. And then the other show or that I thought did it OK is Star Wars, because in Star Wars, they do it OK, where it's very simple, basic powers, push, pull, lightning, choke, whatever. Um, uh, my maybe a little mind manipulation too thrown in there it's done okay in that sense but it's also holy shit it's op and they just don't use it enough or they it's just not addressed how op it is and like like how to you know, why doesn't vader just force choke and like luke when he sees him and of course there's the like it's his son, whatever, which we learned earlier this episode that Luke is, is big Vader's, spoiler. Yeah, big spoiler for me, at least it was. Um, but, you know, so like, I, I guess that's where I and and I know I, I guess I'm in the minority in this group uh, or in, in anime watch club group for psych psychics. It's why I haven't watched like Mob Psycho. I just I, I don't care. I don't you know. Like, I, I, nothing I've ever seen has made it clear to me that. I would be able to overlook my strong disdain for psychics, if that makes sense. I couldn't tell. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've heard the, the spiel like three times, or yeah, five, five times probably at this point. Uh, but yeah, so that's my trope that I really hate. I, like it's it's probably my least favorite power trope. And I, and I guess that maybe that sequences for me just not really being into magic in general too, like. Uh, I, had, I never grew up with D&D &D or like World of Warcraft or like spells where, where spells were relevant. I grew up playing like, I don't know, I guess Mario and like I get like COD where guns and like strength matter more than like, what's your mana? What's your what's your spell type? Yada, yada. So maybe maybe those two veins are different. Maybe that's why I like it more or less. I, I don't know. I, I've always I've tried to figure it out. I don't know. I really don't know why I don't like it as much. What's your favorite video game of all time? Oh, that's a tough one. Um, 
Uh, I was I was going for the smite dunk, but if oh the smite dunk, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah oh, I was gonna say probably either like CS:GO or Battlefield. Okay, um, well then you win, and I lose. That's fine. <laughs> no, well, no, but Smi- well, smite's cool though because it's about mythology, and it's like yeah, that's different uh, in my eyes because I don't know. Fair. I, I only started liking Smite recently too. So, okay. so we'll wade you into it. I, th- I think I have to go because I got mob tattooed literally on my arm. Um, kind of like what Miles was saying earlier with stargazing, like it's, I, I don't know if it has like an exact reason. It's just cool. Like the fights where, you know, people can punch each other in the face all the time, but how many times do you see people throw like buildings on top of each other? Like that, I, I think that idea of psychics to me is really fun when they power scale from, especially in mob psycho season one throwing desks and stuff at each other to then fighting with entire cities. I think the idea of that um, power scaling and like fighting sequences can be unique compared to something like Naruto or something like that, where, you know, you're just going to be punching people and kicking people a lot and maybe turning into a giant nine tailed Fox. Like who knows? Wait, what was us? (laughs) I I don't know. I haven't seen Naruto, but I think there's a Fox involved. Um, Something with like, because mob, I, I I adore mob and stuff like that. Just with what you can do with the powers is more than just, you know, telekinesis. It's also like, you know, um, there's like, um, my, there's like mind powers with like, um, what's it called? Telepathy and some other things like that, that psychics can do. I think just like the idea of where it's just not limited in one sense is what really sets me like loving psychics, I guess. Yeah. And that's why I dislike it because it, in theory, is unlimited, and there's no clear definition as to. You want the definition, and I love the unknown. Yeah, in, in this case, at least, yeah, it's exactly like I, I hate the fact that, yeah, most of the time too, it's unclear where where does the line stop of the psychic's power or their capabilities. You know, like, and I guess that's where the Deus Ex Machina take part of the take comes in, right? Where it's like, oh, suddenly I've evolved to be able to read the evil villain's mind and save the day i guess you know that's <laughs> i can't think of an watch, example watch but... bob i think it does a really good job of explaining like bob's power mm-hmm. chica do you have any thoughts on psychics i feel like i don't have anything like firm really like you know i'm not fully against them but i'm also not for them either okay. just in the middle like hey, take yeah. you're a normal person you're a very normal person who like sometimes likes things, and de- so it's not a yeah. trope that you latch on to. So is what you're saying. Yeah, right, fair enough. Yeah, completely really fair. Cool. Okay. Well, um, I think that wraps up pretty much like our tropes episode. That was pretty fun. Um, hopefully, I I, I think I would like to do this again. I, I there was something around the table that I didn't get to. Pat accidentally also stole one of mine, so it is what it is. But. Uh, that was super fun. Chica, thanks for joining. Uh, can you tell the people where to find you and like what you're doing right now with your content? Yeah, um, you guys can find me at the Shoujo Sunday podcast at Shoujo with a U. So S-H-O-U-J-O. Sunday, like ice cream Sunday. Um, and we are currently reviewing Fruits Basket, um, which is so fun. Um Season one, please. If we had, if we did all the fruits basket, we would just become a fruits basket podcast. Yep. No, but um, we're doing season one right now, and so it's like a fun time. Uh, we just interviewed um, Kylie McNeil, um, who's the voice actress for Belle, which was very cool. Um, that's on our YouTube channel, um, and. I guess if you guys want to find me, I'm Chica Supreme everywhere. And oh, also, uh, I wouldn't be a good co-host if I didn't do this. Uh, my co-host Gianna Luna has a single coming out. Um, it should maybe it'll be out by the time y'all see it this. Will, yeah. um, on yes, on August thirty first, called Twilight Champagne. Um, definitely go stream it. Uh, she put her heart and soul into it, and we love her. So yeah, that's it for me. I actually talked to her today. Um, and I'll leave links to all of that in the description below. Chica, thank you again for joining us. And if you want to support us, the best way to do so, like, comment, subscribe, leave a review on whatever platform you are watching and or listening to us on. Next week, um, we are doing Watch Club for Space Dandy. Otherwise, if you're here for non-Watch Club activities, 
I think we might be checking out the next season of anime. I'm not sure yet. I gotta see if the timeline works out. So, um, we are. I, it's pretty much gonna be me 45 minutes talking about Friarin, um, and then everything else that's airing. That so can't wait for that. So thank you so much for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye bye. <laughs>